that's the, the highlight of our whole gathering this time. Yeah. That's how we are going to read uh, Tangled Language. So let's start with the small one. Uh, when we deal with the small one, then we turn to the big one. Hopefully. Or just like I said, the big one's going to be the combo. It is, I mean, it's easy because it's, uh, since it is translation from Chinese, the originals are all here. All right, so now uh, uh, a couple uh, things. First is that this particular one is uh, derived from, <coughs> sorry, is derived from a book which is called The Twelve Kingdoms. Sure. Uh, Shi'ar Guo is uh, a composition which, according to Siku Jansu uh, division, it's Zash, yeah, so various histories. It's basically a collection of stories uh, of the Chinese states of the uh, Chongqiu and uh, Jango periods. Uh, Tango supposedly loved those things, they translated those. Uh, those were used in text as textbooks uh, in the Tango Academy, uh, which they established. Uh, so this is a, a very famous story about the King Wen, Wen Gong, of the uh, Jin Dynasty, he's here, first line, the, the word list here is in exact uh, order of appearance, only the so-called auxiliary words, which we have mentioned right now, they are omitted, but we will deal with those uh, later. Now, uh, we will deal with those in the due time. Uh, now I have uh, provided below here the uh, phonetic transcription. Not that I am uh, going to ask any boy to read it. <laughs> uh, Actually, just... Chris and Brian are totally ready. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing a dramatic performance. Uh, no, the problem is that uh, I myself will not be able to correct pronunciation. <laughs> I think that will enhance the dramatic aspect of their That is that, uh, mm, but nonetheless, eventually we will get to a stage when we are actually able to speak to We are close to that, we are working on this. Uh, the only problem is that the uh, array of topics which we can discuss in Tempo <laughs> is very limited. It's basically a law. Uh, or Buddhism, <laughs> and sometimes maybe land contracts, okay. or household <laughs> registers. Uh, therefore, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very dull conversation. Uh, from what it says, I mean, although our language of Tangut is kind of poor, so we can't really judge you that Tangut's really had any sense of humor. <laughs> uh, they did, in fact, because they have translated all those, you know, uh, satires on Confucius uh, from the Tang and the Sum, yeah. Uh, for example, this famous altar of Confucius reconciliation, it's basically a uh, satire on Confucius. And so, but nonetheless. Uh, so they probably had some sense of humor, but uh, they were like dead serious people, I guess. <laughs> I mean, imagine their land. I mean, they either go to war or then they could pray. <laughs> After they pray, they go to war again. Yeah, it's basically the, the size of a door. Uh, or meditate. Just, all right, but uh, Tangut wine was actually quite famous. And uh, even now, uh, in Gansu area and also in Ninsha, uh, there are a few of those, uh, uh, how do they say that, wine factories, wineries, yeah, which a claim to produce a stuff according to uh, Tango recipes. Uh, uh, and uh, I was once at a conference which was sponsored by one of those wineries. <laughs> and uh, they started in and they go, Wujo. Uh, <coughs> that's in a way, Wujo. And they started serving wine uh, eight in the morning. Oh. So this was one of the best conferences I ever participated in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, because the, 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 the sponsor, I mean, he 
also in his winery he had this center for the study of the tango culture, <laughs> which was uh, right next to the distillery. So I mean, you can actually smell it. <laughs> and if you feel unhappy, then you can just go there and you know, have a shot and they return to tango research. All right, so <clears throat> let's go. Now let's deal with that. So you guys uh, all got the, uh, the, the, the first one. Now let's uh, uh, deal with those. Uh, if you uh, look into the word list which I have provided, I mean, I guess it will not be very difficult to translate the sentence. So, uh, the story goes in this way. Uh, the king, uh, one of the jinn, uh, once decided to attack the city called Yuan and uh, decided uh, or established that the city should be captured within three days. Now when the three days passed and the city still didn't surrender and he ordered the army to withdraw. Uh, now there was this another uh, one of his commanders who said that why are we doing that? We had beef with those people and now then we go. And uh, Van Gogh replied that, yes, that might be true, but we still need to preserve the trust. Yeah? And if we said so, then we should do it. Yeah? And so they withdrew, but after uh, knowing that he's such a trustworthy person, everybody else surrendered. Yeah? So that was very uh, successful in Hebrew. So this is what the story is about. Yeah? It's only three lines. Uh, so let's uh, <coughs> see how the uh, Tengut have analyzed this. Now the first sentence goes like this. Yeah. Uh, this one. That's uh, <clears throat> now let's analyze. Remember, Tango is uh, subject object verb. That's what we like. Uh, first of all, yeah, we need to find out, yeah, how do we uh, divide a sentence? I have divided, I have punctuated that already, so it's no big deal, but just like how we do it. First of all, we find this guy. Now, this guy reads V. Uh, it's not very easy to uh, determine what it is, but we call it uh, verbalizing it. A verb modifier. Uh, in fact, it's a verb which translates or reads as Chinese way or zo to do. <coughs> yeah, just to do something. Now, just like I said, if we look a little bit further down, then we see this character which we yet don't know. Now we see with the we see this guy. After we have seen this guy, we do something very easy. Uh, we go back to the table, which Professor Solnik has provided us. And then we locate this guy here. Now, this is the, stem, the a stem verb prefix. We should concern ourselves at this moment with what it means, yeah? But just, and since there is also a verbalizer here, then we basically find out, yeah, that we are looking at a verb group now, at a verb phrase. We are looking at the verb phrase. So there is a prefix here. Well, sometimes they're called directional prefixes. Yeah. There. Uh, the verbalizer, verb, modifier, whatever. And so here is the verb root. Uh, no, uh, now we are very happy, and since we don't know this word, this this verb, yeah, we uh, happily uh, go to. An online dictionary, yeah, uh, uh, and find out that this character translates as a uh, Chinese uh, ding, according to Zhang Zhongzhu, and translated into normal language, it means something like to establish, establish, decide, put forward, or agree on something, whatever. So, decide. Now then we go on further and see this one. Uh, this dude uh, uh, reads what? 
que es cha. Now we, uh, since again from the uh, table which we have, uh, we know that cha can be understood in two ways actually. Uh, according to Jungle, this uh, cha translates as sha. It may be a preposition or postposition in this matter, or can be a phrase connector. We don't know what that is. But at least we know that uh, it is also a, oh sorry, that it is again uh, a auxiliary word. Mm -hmm. And before that, we can kind of find out that these are meaningful, some lexical items. Uh, we go to the dictionary, find out that it's soya. This soya is sanger three days. Now, after, uh, uh, after doing so, then we can find, it doesn't make much sense to us, uh, but basically says that, yeah, within or on three days, on the third day maybe, yeah, decided, decided. Now, what did he decide? Then we again, uh, uh, with the soya, is that, it's, can that be further broken down? Is one of those words three and the other one yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Sorry. So, which one is so, and which one is which? Yeah. Well, uh, try to guess. So, uh, Holy day it needs three. some. It needs some. Oh, so three. three. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, yeah, yeah, and yeah, or again, classical Chinese. Sign Yeah, yeah. So, sign mm -hmm. So within three days, yeah, something has to be done, or will be done, or something is decided to be done. Now then we go on further, so that's our first friend, okay, well, we come across this dude, this guy here. Uh, this guy, uh, we look at into the dictionary, but this is one of those fundamental characters which someone has to memorize. So we see that, and we go to the dictionary and see that that's, it reads sheep. She, with a lex vowel and a uh, rising tone. Uh, in the dictionary, it means something like to go forward. One. Uh, but it's not necessarily uh, a, a meaningful word. Uh, we would rather a meaningful word. We would rather translate it differently. Uh, so before it, and it's also a verb modifier, just in the way this we is. Uh, now that we can say that this is also, yeah, because uh, probably uh, stem two, uh, uh, sorry, stem one, uh, and stem one, as we know, well, supposedly, uh, is probably uh, bears an uh, agreement with the third person. So somebody did something. Now, what did the somebody do? And then we go up to the I uh, go up here again and see this another guy which reads Lu. And then we can happily look up in the dictionary and say that the Lu means to attack T. Go da and other things as well. To attack or to advance. Now that we know that somebody advanced somewhere. Again, Cho, just like here, this one. And we again translate as a postposition, or we can translate as a case marker, but I think it's position better. On to onwards. And then here, uh, this uh, basically tells us again uh, that this uh, cho modifies what is preceding it. And what precedes this is this. Uh, wa, we. Now this wa has a, uh, has a nationalized vowel, so like wa. So that's yuan uh, in Chinese. And ve is a word for the city, for the city, yeah. Uh, then again, so somebody uh, advanced, attacked upon Yuan City. Now, the only thing which is left for us to do is to find out who did that. And then we go again and we see the Chiba Moa. So the, uh, here we should also remember that uh, Tian Guts uh, translated this Gung Ko, that's Chinese borrowing, 
as part of the personal name. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, Jin Wang uh, the uh, King Van Gul of Jin attacked attacked upon the city of Yuan. And within or three days established or decided. Uh, this is a little bit literal translation of the Chinese, but we can infer what it means, yeah? So the king Wan of the Jin attacked uh, the city of Yuan and uh, established or that it should be captured within three days or on the third day. Uh, it's actually from the context it's within three days. Uh, what, I mean, how do we uh, like analyze the sentence, yeah? Just like I said, the subject here is not marked at all, yeah? Uh, there is no markings here. And there is only one uh, <clears throat> a subject, yeah, uh, in this sentence. Now then we go a little bit further. That's where he attacked, and this is what he did afterwards. Uh, so uh, what really concerns us here is this structure, uh, verb root, a verbal modifier, which also carries the uh, agreement and the verb prefix. Uh, this verb prefix, if we uh, go a little bit back to this table which we have here, this na here, this is an A stem and probably, I mean, from what we know, uh, it is indicative uh, of a completed action, so to speak, yeah, perfective maybe. Uh, so, uh, in any way, or we, it will not be a big mistake if we translate it as the past tense. Uh, so, uh, the uh, Wen Wang, the king Wen of the Jin dynasty, uh, went on to attack. But this is really a verb modifier. We can, can leave it untranslated, just attacked uh, the city of Yuan and established uh, that within three days it should be captured, or it is, it is to be captured. So uh, this is more or less how the sentence work. <clears throat> Can you uh, make sense out of that, please? Where does it say that it will be captured? Uh, it doesn't say so. It's basically, uh, this is just like I said, this is literal translation from the Chinese. It's, uh, <clears throat> if we look into the original, which I discourage uh, uh, from doing, then we will see just things are mm. This is what it says. And China and Tang here is quite literal. They did that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sorry, uh, the first word doesn't have a previous sentence, right? Uh, no. And no, uh, so it doesn't. They, have, they it's only only has modifier here. Right. They don't always need a previous. Uh, not uh, not always. Sometimes I mean there is no exact rule when they do or when they do not. Yeah. I think here it's actually because of this one, yeah, because it's probably already has. But then again, these are the same verb steps, so uh, by that logic there should be this one here. So that's still a little bit uh, confusing uh, in a way. Is the she, is, that, is the fact that they're using the she thing, is that connected with the fact that it's, um, that it's, it, there's two verbs and what look is roughly one sentence? Does Tonglet have so if you, does it have, say, a sentence such that um, you have one finite verb and then bunches of other participles or verbal nouns or converbs or something like sure. that? Sure. So is, is she possibly one of those indicators of a non-finite verb? Uh, uh, this one, uh, we can do that. I mean, we can render it in this manner. I just think that probably at this particular stage it's going to be too complicated. Uh, so I would prefer translating that just, you know, more or less following the standards. So, uh, eject, decide, yeah. So we basically have them to narrow. Well, in, in the red character, so the first red character and the third red character are exactly the same Yeah, character. they are, they are. Yet the pronunciation is apparently different. 
No, no, cha. So where's the other cha? Yeah. Oh, stop, stop, sorry. The smell barrier. You. The 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 transcription line four is actually for the latter part of the first yeah, 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 line okay, of. Yeah. Sorry. Of, uh, yeah. This cha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can reproduce it here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they, these are the same. Yeah, the, the, this one. Yeah. Uh, now oh, here we uh, encounter another thing. Yeah, because uh, there are several uh, verbs in time. Uh, so several words. Yeah, one would be yeah, uh, this one, uh, cha. Another would would be. Uh, this one, ka. Uh, ka. Somebody else, because these two, or uh, these two, uh, the, uh, this one, I mean, in Zhang Zhongzhu, it translates as shang. And also in Zhang Zhongzhu, this translates as zhong. And now here, if I may, yeah, just mm, mm, uh, a little adjustment here, because uh, normally uh, the, those Chinese translations of the Tango characters, uh, they are all derived from Zhang Zhongzhu, from the pearl in hand, which we have discussed yesterday. Now, the problem is that Gula Mao Tsai, when he was doing that, uh, he had this principle, so just mentioned that, so one Tango per one Chinese, or one Chinese per one Tango, there cannot be empty slots. Uh, but many of these, yeah, especially the verb prefixes, uh, there is no way of rendering that in Chinese. There are just no relevant words. So what he did is that for most of those, he either would choose yi <laughs> or sua. <laughs> Sometimes, when it has a little bit of uh, imperative mood, he would use lin. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, for other, he would use, uh, uh, I have mentioned this yesterday, yu, uh, or other, like, like yu, yu and others. Now, or zhi. Now, the problem is, or zhe. Now, the problem is that, uh, how do you say that? Uh, when we, if we try to apply those, yeah? Uh, to reading text. I mean, and th that's what we were doing all, all, for a long time. This does make sense. <laughs> well, just uh, because, yeah, I mean, he was thinking that in this particular sentence, because he was tangled himself, and he wrote Zhang Zhongzhu first in Tangled, and then wrote that in Chinese. He was thinking there should be some substitutes or some connections, and he thought the things were about things which were more or less appropriate for that. Uh, but if we really apply those mechanically, uh, we basically get ourselves into trouble. Yeah. Uh, now these ones, according to the Zhang Zhongzhu, they're all translated as this one is Shang and this one is Zhong. Yeah. No, but the problem is that uh, although it can probably be translated as a Zhong, yeah, but it is not really a postposition, but it's more like a conjunction, a phrase connect, uh, which describes the previous situation or indicates that the following action, the action which followed this, yeah, uh, emerged as the result of the previous. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, uh, if we would, uh, might translate uh, something uh, uh, as English while. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, like something like, uh, while I, while he didn't have money, he still chose to go to the bar. So, uh, but then again, if one would like to uh, indicate causative relationship, he could use this cha. Yeah. Again, so uh, since he had no money, yeah, he didn't go to the bar, something like that. Uh, now the problem is that uh, in this case here, we uh, we uh, these two, they act, this one cha acts in a different capacity. Here it is really a, a past position or a case marker, whatever you, you name it. Yeah, so that's again a case of anonymity here. 
so, but then again, if we look at this, so the king Wen of the Jin Dynasty attacked the uh, city of Yuan and decided to establish that in three days, in the brackets, should be captured. So uh, this is uh, uh, how I have written that in Chinese. Uh, Jin Wen Gong, Yuan Sun San, Gong Hua, and this is a stem, which indicates, which is verb agreement, assign Yu Shang, yeah. A verbal prefix, verbal root, and verbal modifier of the stem A. That again indicates that this is, all the actions are, are undertaken uh, by the uh, king of G. Okay? Uh, so ya vi ji. Wan we mi ho. Sounds great. <laughs> so ha vi ji. Wan we mi ho. Okay, those now, these are tone marks. Okay, so uh, that's pretty easy. Again, how do you look? Look at the first one, and we see, uh, because Sanri, we already know from the previous sentence. Do we? <laughs> do we? <laughs> or do we not? <laughs> okay, uh, so we are very happy. We say, oh, Sanri, Sanri, why? And then we look at this one. Now that we again go to the table. I suppose that we have memorized those, but if we did not, then we go back to the table and see we. A v is completed action, blah, 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 but oh, post tense, past tense. Okay. Now we go back here and see that's So this v clearly indicates uh, that what follows is a verb. Now, again, we, are, we very happily go to the dictionary and see that the verb reads G and also A stem, which indicates, but A stems are not indicated in the dictionary, by the way. Uh, and this tells us to pass, to exceed, to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Martin said we go to the dictionary. Yeah. How do you go to the dictionary? I, I will tell you how to do now. This is a bonus track. Huh? Bonus track. OK. Huh? That's a bonus. Oh, a bonus. Bonus. Yeah. I need my bonus now. Wow. OK. OK. But this was, uh, if I start doing this now, this will consume the rest. If, if you did your homework, you would know this. I wouldn't do my homework before I came. Oh, I should have, shouldn't I? <laughs> but uh, if we have time, and hopefully we will have some time, then uh, we will look for it. Okay, so the three days, okay, subject, and G, to go through. The three days. What did they do? Uh, what did the three, the three days do? They passed, yeah. And we know this already. That's Huang Wei. And that's me. Me, which is we again very happily find in the dictionary. But we're supposed to know this. Uh, which is negative, universal verbal negative. Bu, not to, not. And again, we look again into Hyo which is again, and find out that what happened to the city of Yuan. Did it surrender or did it not? No. Did not surrender. Now, and the city of Yuan did not surrender. All right. So what happened next? Sorry, uh, if you need to put a prefix uh, to a word that has a negative, you put it before the negative or between the negative and the verb. Of course, between the uh, the prefix and the stem. That's why it's prefix. Okay, so then we please uh, go a little bit. So the city didn't surrender. Now again, Wangun. Okay, we see that. And then probably uh, when we look at this particular one, yeah, I have punctuated that already. I probably shouldn't have, but nonetheless, uh, we find this one here, yi. 
Mister. Mister. Uh, this uh, this character is also a very important one. Uh, uh, it can be translated literally, meaning something like to speak, to say, to utter. Uh, but in most cases, uh, it serves as a quotation mark. Quote. Quotation mark. Basically, introducing speech of somebody. Yeah. Well, we can present this same, yeah? Uh, but here, in this case, we don't need to do that. Uh, this, 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 yeah, this, this, yeah, this, 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 well, if we look at them, so that Rangun, well, said something. Uh, what did he say? Uh, he said, well, first of all, we just try to also look again and see this guy. And this guy is V, which is the stem B prefix for this V. You see that? This is V with the central vowel, mm -hmm. and this is V with the legs, with the normal vowel, with the front vowel, and uh, with this Y coda. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we, I think uh, this actually, this, the, the, uh, this one should be removed. Yeah, the, the, the G in the middle, the medial. Uh, but just as. Said uh, uh, wanted to say that that's uh, for looking, not for actual reading. But nonetheless, so this one is well, we can deal with as perfective, and this one is imperative. What to do something? And then we got ga. Now this ga, as of course from the look of it, uh, we can uh, also very happily conclude. Uh, that this character is the army, Jun. Uh, that's actually a Chinese loan word. Jun. And so, and here is saying uh, the army, army should or must, imperative or will, return <coughs> the whole. That's what he said. And here, that's a meaningful word. It's like a jubi, like instruct, to indicate, to order. So the Bangun order. The army will return, or the army should return. Huh? That's what he did. The ku jubi, gavi, lho gi. Yeah. So as you can see, nominative nothing is really marked here in any way. So, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Now please uh, uh, check out uh, uh, this one, this particular. Ga hu ka pier. This translate. I have this in uh, the. Uh, that is an actual Tatangut word. Yeah. Uh, tu ka. Yeah. Hu ka. Sorry. Hu ka is something like general or commander or army supervisor. You know, that kind. This uh, a Tangut actual rank. Yeah. Uh, so when they uh, translated uh, uh, Chinese uh, things, even from the older times, uh, they used uh, real Tangut words uh, for that. For example, they wouldn't say like Tan Jun or something. They would just say like commander, yeah, like chief of staff, I guess. Uh, so so uh, again, 
Now we look at that, look at that, look at that, and what do we see? Uh, I didn't highlight it with red, but should have. This one here. Ni. Ni. Uh, 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 yeah, ni. What do we do? Again, we see this ni, and uh, this is also very, very important sign for us. We go back here and see the table of agreement. And here is this guy. And from that, we can see it's U2, second general of agency, a second plural, agreement for both, first plural and second plural. Possibly cognate with something else, but this should not concern us. So we see this V here. This, this V, we are all fine, and then again, look what. Return us. Return us or we. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, now then we go slightly a little bit forward, so we have seen that. We're all very happy. <coughs> now we uh, go a little bit, a little bit back and see this. Vanu. These two characters. Vanu. like uh, Chinese, uh, that's why is why? For what reason? For what reason? Why? Now again, we look at that as for what reason why return we? Or then just like I said, we can do that uh, if we treat this knee here as the marker of the second plural, second personal, a uh, second plural or elevated speech, then why you, your majesty, return? Uh, that we can do that, unfortunately, there is no way, uh, there is no way of telling, and probably uh, we is correct. And why is it correct, we will see in a moment. Then we just go a little bit further, and we again happily see this, this, the, uh, this two, which is the next red one. That is the character in the Tango language which I like most. That's my favorite, because it helps us reading. Uh huh. Uh, this guy. Nah. Nah. This nah uh, also belongs to the realm of this hundred or so tangled characters which we need to remember. Nah. Uh, marker of the second person agreement. You. Marker of the second person agreement. No, this guy. So, you. Now, before it, there is another character. Yeah, La. Yeah. This La is step two. Yeah? And step two characters, uh, step two verbs. Uh, they can accept uh, bo, 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 the agreement markers. So, you come. You come. Uh, why would you come? Is that to do luji. Luji. These two. Gongxiang. Attack. So, you, that is the second pronoun, you came to attack. Why would you came to attack? Because before that, there is another red character, uh, which is no, we have seen it just a moment ago. And this character is uh, translates or can be rendered as Chinese goo. 
do, which is why, which is cause, reason. So, well, and normally translates as because. And because what? And then again, there is another happy moment. Uh, the character which is right in front of uh, Neil, this one here. Uh, uh, which one? Yeah, this one. Which reads all. And means to have. Means to have. So because we have something, uh, or you have something, you came to attack. And why do we go? Now, so what did you have? Yeah? And uh, what did you uh, have is also very, very simple. Here I must uh, beg for everybody's pardon. Uh, that is to say, uh, I have uh, punctuated uh, this wrong. Yeah? Uh, the, uh, this comma here should be deleted. Uh, it doesn't belong here. So please correct. Uh, so uh, what do you have? Uh, sorry, what do we have? Yeah, the, this comma after the uh, uh, Huawei, Huawei, after the city. Uh, why is that? Uh, B. And then we uh, see. Uh, uh, we see another one. Again in red. Uh, this is another my this is my another favorite character in tangled language, which reads he. And according to Gula Maltai, to the author of the Zhang uh, Zhongzu, this character translates as zhi. It is more it's a marker of Object, indirect object, and it's marker of dat dative and genitive. It's marker of everything, basically. Uh, this end of accusative also. So it has all sorts of meanings. Well, accusative, that's of course. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, what, what's the end? Uh, so ye, I mean, we don't really know how to deal with that, but at least it kind of signals to us that there is some grammar here. Uh, well, uh, we will eventually find out. Okay? Uh, so since there is some grammar here, and then we'll look at the character which follows it. And uh, this uh, reads G, and basically means Yuan or Zui. Uh, crime or uh, offense or something. So, you had or we have or somebody has some offense, and then what, what is this offense? And then we look after this Yi, and we find out that it's again the city of Yuan, Yuan Wei, uh, and the character which follows it, Yuan Wei, this Kwe, this Kwe, this guy. Yeah, I thought I was too much. Huh? Uh, this one. Uh, 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 uh. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, this is very, very interesting character. Uh, because uh, there is the one which looks exactly like that, but the other way around. That is one of the tangent ways of creating characters, yeah? Shifting positions. This one looks ta, reads ta, and is a Chinese borrowing, da. Sometimes it reads differently uh, because there is also tangled own word, which looks exactly the same, but reads li, but also means da. Great, big. Now, but this one, as we can see, just a little shift, yeah? So, now, but the, the, uh, the change of meaning is dramatic. Uh, because this kue, uh, means uh, something, uh, uh, it also reads as, uh, translates as da. But this big is not big in terms of big and small. Uh, but it's like a big boss, uh, leader. Uh, 
Now, in this particular case, uh, we translate this uh, one, uh, uh, one uh, where, a uh, que, as the lord of the city of Yuan. Yeah, the big guy uh, from the Yuan, from the city of Yuan. Uh, now, what follows then is uh, Wang, Ni, Ni, the first one, and uh, another character uh, here is Xi, 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 this one. Uh, which one? Yeah, there. Xi, Xi, which means before, originally, in advance, uh, yeah, formerly. And Wang is addressing the king, yeah. So, and then we look at the commander, said, yeah, this done. Uh, he, like, tried to console, or, uh, not to consult, tried to advise, counsel the king, and said, okay, king, you, originally, originally, uh, had contradiction, or were abused, and then this ye here. I think here, rather, it is genetic, yeah? Uh, abused, uh, an abuse from uh, the lord of the city of Yuan. You were humiliated or whatever, yeah? Of the city of Yuan. And since this was so, because, because you were abused by the lord of the city of Yuan, you, the king, yeah, here is the agreement marker, not this uh, red one, came attacking, came to attack. Why, and this knee here, why do we leave? Now, so, uh, the uh, actual sentence just uh, goes like this. Yeah, so you, king, uh, so the commander in chief, so sorry, not the chief of staff or whatever, uh, uh, tried to counsel the king and said, so, king, originally, uh, you, here probably this ye, I mean, we can translate in right at least, probably should indicate that as a, some sort of passive. So, uh, you were abused by the king of, by the lord of Yuanchan, of the city of Yuan. And uh, since that, and because of that, yeah, now we came, you came, you came to attack. And why we are